Although sometimes conceived as a bird, it's possible that Rehonavis was more like a dromaeosaurid dinosaur. Again, the possibility of Rehonavis evolving from flying ancestors is quite possible, and the term secondarily flightless is often applied. Still, some consider Rehonavis as being capable of flight, as evidenced by the long four limbs and attachments for ligaments to the shoulder that prove it had the necessary degrees of wing motion for flight. It has been suggested that unenlegines like Osteoraptor had better capacities for running and pursuit predation than other dromaeosaurids. They could likely maintain high speeds for extended amounts of time because they were more gracile. Osteoraptor is one of the largest. The jaws of Bitteraptor are long and slender, both advantages that could theoretically help in seizing prey like small mammals that might be hiding amongst rocks. No fossil discoveries have been made of any feathers, since its close relatives had feathers, it is likely that it also was feathered. Initially thought to be a juvenile Megaraptor, Unenlagia was found to not only be a separate species but one that would challenge the notions for the origins of flight. It is considered to be too large for flight itself, and the wings while having a high degree of motion, are thought to not being able to being raised above the spine. One consideration is that the wings were held out and used as stabilizers while chasing prey. The future for Nuquinraptor is now uncertain because now there is speculation that its fossils are actually further remains of Unenlagia, and since Unenlagia was officially named eight years before, Nuquinraptor may become a junior synonym to it Unenlagia. Synornithosaurus was especially well preserved, and not only were the presence of feathers clearly revealed, they showed indications of having differing colors for different body areas. As a living creature, it probably hunted around the forest floor looking for things like small mammals. It also once had the suggestion put forward that it had a venomous bite. This was based on an interpretation of the front teeth being elongated and grooved to allow poison to run through, with space for poison glands in the skull. Hesperonychus was assigned to Microraptoria due to having a spatulate pubic symphysis. Despite their small size, the pubic bones were fused, a characteristic of adult dinosaurs, indicating that the specimen does not represent a juvenile of a known species. It is one of the smallest known carnivorous dinosaurs from North America. Microraptor had long penaceous feathers that formed aerodynamic surfaces on the arms and tail but also on the legs. It is speculated that it may have glided using all four limbs for lift. Subsequent studies have suggested that it was capable of powered flight as well. By analyzing the fossilized melanosomes in the fossil with scanning electron microscope techniques, the researchers compared their arrangements to those of modern birds. In Microraptor, these cells were shaped in a manner consistent with black, glossy coloration in modern birds. These rod-shaped, narrow melanosomes were arranged in stacked layers, much like those of a modern starling, and indicated iridescence in the plumage of Microraptor. Changiraptor is both a little bit longer and much more heavily built than Microraptor, casting serious doubts that Changiraptor would have been capable of even gliding flight. The arms of Bambiraptor are thought to have been very dexterous as well as fingers that were semi-opposable, what this means is that it could have possibly held small prey in its arms and actually lift them up to its mouth for easier feeding. Tianuraptor is a medium-sized dromaeosaurid that has several derived features that separate it from other dromaeosaurids, like the length of the middle caudal vertebrae being more than twice that of the back and an unusually long hind limb that is roughly three times as long as the entire series of dorsal vertebrae. Linharaptor would have been a fast and agile predator, perhaps preying on small ceratopsians. The large toe claws may have been used for capturing prey. The holotype was recovered from rocks at Bayan Mandahu that belong to the Wulansahai Formation. The latter includes lithologies that are very similar to the Mongolian Campanian aged rocks of the Jadokta Formation which have yielded the closely related dromaeosaurids Sagan and Velociraptor.
Sagan probably lived and hunted like most other small Asian dromaeosaurids, hunting either other small dinosaurs as well as possibly smaller vertebrates such as lizards or even small mammals. Sorornitholestes would have faced predatory competition from other small theropods like Truden. However, micro wear on the teeth indicated that it likely preferred larger prey items than the Trudontids it shared their environment with. Such differentiations in its diet likely allowed the theropod to inhabit the same environment. To date, all of the dozen or so identified velociraptor specimens have been of solitary individuals and its intelligence has been wildly exaggerated. It wasn't as speedy as its name implies neither, it would have been severely hampered by their short legs and could have easily been outrun by an athletic human. It's possible that these predators could have attained more lift in mid-stride with the aid of their presumably feathered arms. One famous fossil specimen preserves a velociraptor and protoceratops locked in life and death combat as they were both buried alive by a sudden sandstorm. John Ostrom's study of Deinonychus in the late 1960s revolutionized the way scientists thought about dinosaurs, leading to the dinosaur renaissance and igniting the debate on whether dinosaurs were warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Before this, the popular conception of dinosaurs had been one of plodding, reptilian giants. Dromaeosaurus differs from most of its relatives in having a short, massive skull, a deep mandible, and robust teeth. The teeth tend to be more heavily worn than those of its relative Sorornitholestes, suggesting that its jaws were used for crushing and tearing rather than simply slicing through flesh. Utahraptor was not particularly fast and would have been an ambush hunter that preyed on large dinosaurs such as the contemporary iguanodonts it shared its environment with. One thing to consider is that the large size of Utahraptor may have meant it had a degree of gigantothermy that would not have been present in its smaller group relatives. If so then it may have had a reduced or altered arrangement of feathers instead. Halskoraptor had characteristics that allowed it to spend time both in water and on land, the short tail would have brought the center of gravity more to the front, which is more useful for swimming than walking. It had to come up onto land to reproduce, because, like all dinosaurs, it needed to lay its eggs on land. Initially thought to be one of the most primitive birds in the fossil record, later studies have depicted Ginfangoteryx as a small trudontid theropod dinosaur, it was preserved with extensive impressions of penaceous feathers, but it lacks flight feathers on its hind legs. May is notable as a distinct species of trudontid based on several unique features, including extremely large nares. It is most closely related to the Trudontid synovenator, which places it near the base of the Trudontid family. Trudontids have sickle claws and raptorial hands, and some of the highest non-avian encephalization quotients, suggesting that they were behaviorally advanced and had keen senses. Their eyes were also large, and pointed forward, indicating that they had good binocular vision, making them hunting like birds do today. The large brain of the Truden does not mean it was more intelligent, but it would have had even greater opportunity to learn from its environment. The characteristic teeth of Truden do not make its diet easy to establish, although overall they are recurved like those of a predator, they have serrations that suggest herbivore. When considering the other predatory traits such as forward-facing eyes, long legs, and light weight build and the presence of a sickle claw on each foot, it is almost certain that Truden was a predator. Another feature that makes Truden stand out from other dinosaurs is the presence of an opposable finger. Anchiornis is known to have been feathered and one specimen is so well preserved that paleontologists have been able to determine what color and pattern these feathers were in life. It's not sure if it could fly like modern birds, it was probably more for grasping and climbing Mesozoic trees to keep out of the way of predators. 
Use of the wings during leaping would have resulted in a 20% increase in height and distance. Notably, it seems to have lacked a breastbone, which may have been made of cartilage rather than bone, as in more primitive theropods. The fossilized feathers of Kaihong possessed nanostructures which were analyzed and interpreted as melanosomes, showing similarity to organelles that produce a black iridescent color in extant birds. This dinosaur represents the oldest known evidence of platelet-like melanosomes. The tail of Eosinoteryx was very short compared to most members of those groups does not show signs of the presence of complex band feathers while the legs appear to have been featherless. Its discovery suggests that the origin of flight was much more complex than previously thought. Orony was roughly the size of a modern pheasant, it had clawed wings and a long bony tail. Its leg bones were similar to those of Archaeopteryx, but overall its anatomy was more primitive. It may be the most basal avialan dinosaur known to date. The bird-like characteristics of Petipenna are further evidence of the dinosaur-bird evolutionary relationship. Apart from having a very bird-like skeletal structure in its legs, it was remarkable due to the presence of long penaceous feathers on the feet. Scansoriopteryx is a sparrow-sized animal that shows adaptations in the foot indicating an arboreal lifestyle. It possessed an unusual, elongated third finger which may have supported a membranous wing. The tail may have been used as a prop, much like the tails of modern woodpeckers. Epidexeteryx was a very special find as not only is it one of the earliest dino birds it also had highly ornate tail feathers. These feathers are thought to have been similar to those of a peacock, and as display feathers, possibly only present in the males for the purpose of attracting females. It also had a covering of smaller but primitive feathers over the rest of its body. However, its body feathers are unique in that some appear to arise from a membranous structure at the base of each feather. It has been suggested that this may represent a stage in the evolution of the feather. Epidexeteryx appears to have lacked remages, though based on the related yi qi, it may also have possessed some sort of membrane wing to allow gliding. This modified wrist bone and membrane-based plane found in yi qi is unique among all known dinosaurs, and might have resulted in wings similar in appearance to those of bats, in what may have been one of many independent evolutionary experiments with flight close to the origin of birds.